Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to talk all things dividend investing and let you all know some of the key things that I personally look for when I am looking to buy a dividend stock. I really have been focusing more on building up my dividend portfolio in the recent months and trying to build more passive income for myself. So in this video, I want to go over all of the key things that I look for and also explain some of the reasons why investors such as myself love dividend stocks so much because I think there is a little bit of miscommunication out there in the market. I believe that I have some pretty incredible investing information for all of you in this video, so I really hope that you all enjoy it and that you learn something new. However, as always, before we hop into the video, I just need to let you all know that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. It's all just my own opinion and this is not a recommendation or anything like that to go and buy any of the stocks that I discuss in this video. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's just hop right into it and get started with all things dividends. A dividend is quite literally a company paying you cash simply for holding their stock. And I think that there is no form of better passive income than dividend investing because you literally don't have to do anything other than hold shares of the business in your portfolio. When investors receive their dividend payments, it goes right into their investing accounts in the form of cash. And this cash, investors can do whatever they want with. You can go out and you can pay your utility bills or you can reinvest that money back into your portfolio or you can buy more shares of the business that paid you the dividend. There is also something called the DRIP program, which stands for the Dividend Reinvestment Program. What this is, is instead of the company paying you cash directly into your investing account, they take that cash and they automatically buy more shares of their business instead of paying you out the cash. What this does is increases your position in the company and ultimately increases your passive income because you're building more shares in that business and as you build more shares in that business, they end up paying you more dividends over the long term. Let's actually play around with a dividend reinvestment calculator and I just want to show you all how powerful reinvesting dividends back into your investing portfolio can be over a long period of time because it's pretty insane. Here I entered the dividend information for TELUS, which is actually a dividend stock that I own. In this calculation, I am saying that I am starting with a $10,000 initial investment and I am expecting the stock plus the dividend to both increase by 5% annually over the next 40 years. And I am also going to be reinvesting this dividend back into the stock over the 40 years as well. When we calculate this, we can see that on the 40th year, the total investment will have grown to $250,000. I will own four times more shares and I will be receiving $10,500 in annual dividend payments, which is also more than my initial investment into TELUS. This $10,500 in annual dividends will be paid out to me every single year, which means that every year I will be receiving an over 100% return on my initial investment in cash straight to my account. This is with no adding to this position either. This is all just letting that initial $10,000 do its thing. Einstein said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And once the compound interest ball gets rolling, it's incredible what happens. Now let's head back to the dividend calculator. And now let's say that we're going to add in an additional $100 a month to this investment. And let's see how consistently adding $100 every single month increases the long-term gains. Here we can see that with these additions, the total worth of the position will grow to $573,000 at the end of 40 years. I will also own 2,980 shares and my annual dividend payments will be $24,241. So by adding $100 a month to this investment, the final result will be a more than double increase to the position size and the income the position generates me after 40 years. I wanted to show you all this early on in the video because there are a lot of people out there who will say that dividends are not worth investing in if you're young, but the returns that dividends can provide over a long period of time simply speak for themselves. Here we can see that my dividend portfolio currently brings in about $5,500 a year with a monthly average of about $461 a month. This is not enough for me to live off of yet, but I mean, I am getting there. And this is pretty substantial income that my dividend portfolio is bringing me in now. And this is totally passive income. Here we can also see that in December of 2021, my dividend portfolio is going to pay me $773 for doing absolutely nothing other than holding some dividend stocks in my portfolio. I think that this is pretty cool. I mean, this is $773 right here that I am going to get for doing absolutely nothing. And this is a pretty substantial amount of income. This money right here could cover my utilities, my car bill, my phone bill, and many other expenses that I have, maybe even my groceries. 
Right now, I am not actually going to be using this money to go out and pay my bills because I do have some income right now, so this money will be reinvested back into my portfolio. Eventually, my ultimate goal is to have my dividend income grow to a point where it can pay all of my bills, because to me, that would be true financial freedom. My portfolio alone would be paying for everything I need, which would give me the freedom to do basically anything. Alright, but now that we have talked about dividends and why investors such as myself like them so much, let's talk about some key things investors need to pay attention to when they are looking at dividend stocks. The first thing is how to tell which companies actually pay dividends. To do this, you need to head over to any website that shows the information on any stock. I am going to be using Stock and Lock in these examples. And here we can see that TELUS pays a dividend of 4.392% on today's share price, which means the company pays shareholders about 4.4% annually on shares purchased today. Google, on the other hand, does not pay a dividend. And right here, we can see that the dividend yield is just blank. Again, this simply means that this business does not pay their shareholders any dividends. If you are an investor looking for dividend income in your portfolio, then Google isn't a stock that will provide this for you. At this point, you may be asking yourself though, why don't we just go out and find the highest dividend paying companies and just buy them? Like this stock right here. It has a 39.66% dividend right now, which is absolutely insane. Well, it's because when I see dividend yields this high, it's a red flag. It usually means the dividend is unsustainable and the business will not be able to maintain this level of dividend payments in the future. When you receive a dividend, it is literally the underlying business paying you money from their profits. So if I own TELUS shares, then a very small portion of TELUS profits are being paid directly to me as a shareholder in the form of a dividend. Now, when a company's dividend yield gets this high right here, it is most likely because something negative just happened to the underlying business's profit potential and the share price has fallen suddenly. Going forward, I would not be surprised if this dividend gets cut altogether. For me personally, when I see a dividend starting to approach the 8-10% to range, that's when I start to get very cautious. Because in our current market, those are very high dividend yields, and they're most likely not going to be very sustainable. So please, do not go out there and just start buying high dividend yielding stocks because it's usually a trap in the market. And let me show you why. So if we actually take a look at the same business's cash flow statement with that 39% yield, we can see that their cash from operations don't cover the dividend payments anymore. The dividend payments are actually about double the amount of cash the operations produce, which once again suggests to me that this dividend payment right here is unsustainable. As a dividend investor, what I look for are solid businesses that can either maintain or grow their dividends in the future. I only want to invest in solid companies that happen to pay a dividend. And let me show you some examples here. So right here we have Microsoft, and I'm sure that we all know what Microsoft is and what they do. It's one of the largest companies on the planet. Here we can also see that Microsoft pays a 0.764 dividend on shares purchased today, which isn't anything incredible, but it is still a dividend. Now, if we head over to Microsoft's cash flow statement, we can see that this business produced $76 billion in operating cash flow and $56 billion in free cash flow in the trailing 12 months or in the last year. This is how much cash Microsoft as a business is producing. And here we can see that Microsoft's dividends paid in the trailing 12 months were $16.5 billion, which is significantly less than the business's free cash flow and operating cash flows. What this tells me is that Microsoft should have no problem at all maintaining this dividend in the future, because the dividend payments are only a fraction of the cash the business is actually producing. Also, very quickly, if you want to learn how to read balance sheets, cash flow statements, and income statements, then I would strongly recommend going and watching this playlist right here on my channel. I put this together and it pretty much explains everything you need to know about when you're looking at a business's financials in very good detail. So if you are someone who wants to learn how to read financials a little bit more in depth, then again, I would strongly recommend going and watching this playlist. But now let's also take a look at Microsoft's dividend payments, because if we just scroll out here a little bit all the way back to, I don't know, 2008, we can see that the dividends that Microsoft is paying out have been growing pretty much every single year for the past 13 years. And the reason that Microsoft is able to continue increasing their dividends year after year after year like this is simply because Microsoft as a business has been growing over the years as well. And let me show you what I mean here. So let's just go and take a look at Microsoft's operating cash flow since 2007. And right here, once again, we can see that Microsoft's cash flows have actually been increasing over the past 13, 14, 15 years as well. 
And as Microsoft's operating cash flow continues increasing, the amount of cash that the business is able to pay out in dividends to their shareholders increases as well. Now, if we head over to Stock Unlock's freeform tool and we just go to dividends per share, we can see how Microsoft's dividends per share have actually been increasing over time as well. So right here, all the way back in 2006, we can see that Microsoft was paying only 37 cents per share in dividends to their shareholders. And today, we can see that this has now grown all the way up to $2.24 per share in dividends. So Microsoft's dividend has increased by about 600% or six times in the past 15 years. And if Microsoft can in fact continue growing in the future, then it means that the dividend per share should also increasing over the long term. So if I buy 100 shares today and I get that $2.24 per share in annual dividends, then my dividend income today is $224. And if Microsoft can grow the dividend by, let's say, three times over the next 10 years, then the dividend per share will grow to $6.72 per share. And those same 100 shares that I purchased 10 years ago will now be yielding me $672 a year in dividends. This is why I do my absolute best to invest in great companies that are growing and also pay a dividend. Because as the underlying business grows its cash flows, they can pay me as a shareholder more money. Canadian National Rail is another great example of this. Their dividend was only 13 cents a share back in 2003, and today it has grown by 14.8 times to $1.93 per share. So 1,000 shares purchased back in 2003 would have yielded me $130 a year in dividends, and those same 1,000 shares would now yield me $1,930 in annual dividend payments. Investors would have had to do nothing to receive these increased payments but hold on to the shares of the business either, which I think is pretty awesome. This is all because the underlying business of CN Rail has been growing over the past 18 years and increasing the amount of cash they bring in. So again, investing in growing businesses that increase their dividends is what I personally love to do because over time, my dividend income should increase as the business continues growing. Companies will usually tell investors beforehand if they plan on increasing the dividend as well, and give investors a timeline. Fortis, for example, tells investors that they're expecting to increase their dividend by 6% every year out to 2025. They also let investors know that they have increased the dividend for the past 47 years straight. And it looks like they're going to continue increasing the dividend in the future. They don't plan on stopping the dividend increases anytime soon. TELUS also announced that they plan to increase their dividend by 7-10% to annually from 2020 to the end of 2022, which I think is really strong dividend growth. So, investors can expect TELUS to continue increasing the dividend over the next two years. And personally, I would not be surprised to see TELUS continuing to increase their dividend even further out past 2022, given just how strong this business has been in the past years and with their continued runway for more growth. Dividend stocks also have an added advantage for investors, which is when market crashes or corrections happen, the yield on dividend stocks actually go up. This is simply because the dividend yield is calculated by taking the dividend per share and dividing it by the current share price. So as the share price goes down, the dividend yield actually increases. Let's take a look at CN Rail's historical dividend yield as an example. Here we can see that CN's highest dividend yields were here in 2008 during the Great Recession, and here again in 2020 during the March stock market crash. In 2008, CN's dividend yield rose all the way to 2.8%, and in 2020, it once again reached 2.8%. Now, if we take a look at CN Rail's stock price, we can see that in 2008, there was this little crash where the stock lost about 30% of its value. And when the stock price crashed, the dividend yield increased. This was the exact same thing that happened right here at the beginning of 2020. CN Rail was selling for about $94 a share, and then in March, the stock fell all the way down to $75 a share, which again lost about 25-30% of its value, and this is when the dividend yield started spiking again. Investors who were buying shares at this time got the best dividend yield on new shares purchased, and I believe that dividend stocks help investors think rationally when the stock market is crashing or stocks are selling off because we can clearly see that the yields are actually increasing as the shares are going lower. All the investor has to do at this point is ask if the underlying business is still okay, and if the underlying business can continue generating cash to pay that dividend. To put it simply, dividend stocks help investors focus on the returns when stock prices are crashing. The Intelligent Investor, which in my opinion is the best book on investing ever written, has this to say as well. 
every investor who owns stocks must expect to see them fluctuate in value over the years. It's true, and when price fluctuations are sending stocks lower, dividend investors can get the best yields on their stocks. The last thing that I want to say about dividend stocks is that if you are going to invest in them, I would do your best to have a very long-term focus. Do not get caught up in the day-to-day -day price action or sell your stocks to buy something that is more attractive or super risky or people say is going to the moon. Dividend investing works best when we buy the stocks in a way where we can almost set it and forget it and allow the dividends to compound for us over the years. So to me, I think dividends are a great option for investors who never want to worry about their portfolio and want a stress-free investing experience. Having consistent cash flows coming into your account also allows you to continually buy more shares of your stocks no matter what the stock market is doing. So long as you have dividends coming in, you can continue investing that money back into the market consistently. On page 190 of The Intelligent Investor, it also says, Timing is of great psychological importance to the speculator because they want to make their profits in a hurry. The idea of waiting a year before their stock moves up is repugnant to them but a waiting period as such is of no consequence to the investor. On page 219, it also says, if your investment horizon is long, at least 25 or 30 years, there is only one sensible approach. Buy every month, automatically, and whenever you can spare some money. Then finally, on page 223, it says, over a 10, 20, 30 year investment horizon, the market daily dipsy doodles simply do not matter. In any case, for anyone who will be investing for years to come, falling stock prices are good news, not bad, since they enable you to buy more for less money. The longer and further stocks fall, and the more steadily you keep buying them as they drop, the more money you will make in the end. The intelligent investor should be perfectly comfortable owning a stock even if the stock market stopped supplying daily prices for the next 10 years. So again, remain focused on building long-term wealth in the stock market. And if there is a time where stock prices are falling, try to see this as a good thing because we can increase our income while stock prices are lower. I know that it is incredibly hard to focus on the long term sometimes, but it's what every legendary investor and every great investing book preaches we should do. But that is going to wrap up the video everyone, and I really hope you all enjoyed. If you did enjoy this video or you found it useful in some way, then please remember to leave a like on it, it really helps out my channel. Also, if you're new here and you want to stick around and see more stock market related content, then please consider subscribing to my channel because that would be pretty awesome too. But with all of that being said, thank you all so much for giving me some time out of your day to watch my video. And if you made it to the end, then I really appreciate it. Nothing helps my channel more than you guys watching the entire video all the way to the end. So again, thank you all so much. And I really hope to see you all again in my next video.